Hello, hello. How's it going? Sorry for the wait. It's just sharing all the links to the stream everywhere. So, as you can see, it's not the same sculpt that we had last week, and I'll explain why in a second. Divyat, Divyat. Hi, Leila. Hi, Oliver. Olivier. So, uh, ArtStation has launched yet another art competition, second one this year, I believe. And I decided to, well, try myself out again. <laughs> and I picked the concept. For those who, of you who don't know, ArtStation runs this contest in two stages. The first one is for 2D artists, where they're given a topic and they have to design, I think, six characters fitting the topic. And then the 3D stage comes along and 3D artists pick up the concept arts from the first stage and they turn them into 3D. And it's a great way to level up, it's a great way to network, um, you get a lot of exposure because people like follow your blog and see how you're doing. They follow you on ArtStation and other platforms. Um, it's just a great way to grow and learn new stuff. Anyway, so the concept that I've chosen is this one. Oop. This one. There were lots of great concepts this time, um, but I decided to settle on this one. Which can appear a bit simple, but I like that it's simple. That means that I can change or like modify stuff quite a bit and add my own level of detail to it. Basically, it gives me freedom to move around, so to speak. <laughs> oh, Mergord, it's Layla. <laughs> Hi, Emperor of Cheese. Hello. Hi, good luck. Hi, Victor. So, yeah, I started blocking out the character yesterday, and I'll explain why. Um, by why, I mean I'm traveling away to Tokyo, actually Japan, which is the topic of the contest. Um, wasn't intentional. I need to go there to change my passport. Anyway, um, the concept, uh, the contest is timed, so we only have 51 day to go or 50 days to go. Which can seem like a long time, but the weeks fly by very quickly. And I'll be out of the contest for two weeks. So I decided that it would be a good idea to dedicate my time here uh, to working on the contest itself. And I encourage all of you guys, if you haven't signed up yet, try yourself out. Um, go and register. You don't need to pay anything to participate, just pick a concept that you like, and then off to ZBrush or Blender, depends on what you want to use. I'm going to be using ZBrush because that's what I'm familiar with. I think it will look awesome. Thank you. It sounds cool. Thank you, Professor Numbums. You guys have such creative nicknames. Mine is just my first name and my last name. Hi there, this is looking nice. Ooh, Tokyo, make sure to do karaoke 
and catch Pokemon while you're there. I want to go to Tokyo one day. Yeah, it's on the on the list. Karaoke would be fun. Um, and there are lots of Pokemon centers like around. I think there's one in each city. And they're like basically just Pokemon merchandise stores, but they're called Pokemon centers, where you can like buy plushies, but it's basically you. Kind of like adopt Pokemon, but I don't know. It's really cute. <clears throat> Let me bring in the concept. And so I have a cropped version of her face. So the question is, are any of you guys participating in the Art Station Challenge? Rodolfo? What do you mean by Rodolfo? Oh, you mean the name of the stream. Yeah, I changed it. If you reload the page, um, it will be my actual name. Which is... Um, here, you can see it, Leila Visca. I hear is about that. Thought I like the lights and flash of Tokyo. I would probably prefer the smaller towns, the onsens and the mountains, maybe Hokkaido. Yeah, but it costs money to travel around Tokyo. Oh, Tokyo, Japan. And it's just not the sort of budget that I currently have. The second time around? For sure. I'd want to travel around. I haven't heard of the... until now. I haven't heard of the art station challenge. Then I'll show you. So you go on art station and then there's learn or sometimes it will even like be in the news over here. Usually it's in learn challenges. And here it is, it's open, meaning it's live right now. And there are different categories that you can enter. This was the first stage, just like I told you guys. So they're currently ju being judged. It's a 2D phase that is already over. And now you can grab concepts from this stage. Character design. Or you don't have to. You can model a prop if you want. You can grab the prop design from here then. And then enter the category that you want. One popular one is game character art. Meaning you have to create the game ready model with the coding topology. Uh, you're limited by poly count, limited by texture sets, how many you have. This one is less limited, but it's about rendering it in the render rendering engine. This one is real time. You can use Marmoset or Unreal, Unity, whatever you want. Yeah, and this one is a bit different. It's more for animation production. That's the one that I've entered. And I always enter. Anyway, character design, you go to submissions, and there are completed submissions and uncompleted. Overall, there are a hundred oh, a thousand and a hundred seventeen challenges. So a lot of concepts to choose from. And really cool ideas too. And you can pick any concept that you like. And then just off you go. You join the challenge and you start like your own blog over here. You'll have a blog. OK. 
can sculpt a character. This one is really cool. It's sure that traveling has gone up overall. I always, I guess it's back to Google Earth vacations for now. <laughs> yeah, maybe for now, but I did manage to save up some money to go to Japan. Um, yeah. Can be expensive though. Hi Leila, your voice is like meditation. How can you be this gorgeous and talented? Thank you. Um, I'll take it as a compliment. I am not quite sold on the idea of being talented, I have my own take on it. Um, being that talent is overrated. But thank you, nevertheless. Character must be an original design or could it be the base the char could you base the character on someone else's concept? So you base it off the concepts from this stage like specifically you can use any of these concepts without asking but you cannot use concepts from other people on the internet that don't know about the challenge you cannot base it off someone else's the other thing you could do you could design your own character but it takes time to create a good character that's why they dedicated the whole like i don't know 30 days to this one so people can take time and design each character very carefully if you want to, you can design your own and do the 3D part. But I would encourage you to pick it from here. Unless you're a very good 2D concept designer or 3D concept designer, then go for it. Hey Leila, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Familiar nicknames. Glad to see you all. So this is the concept artist that I chose, Robin Who? Oh, not sure. Her name is Ayako. She's a robot spy slash robot geisha. I thought it fit the theme of the concepts very well. I just overall like the colors and the composition of the piece. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So characters for film need to be more detailed. Uh, usually, yes, because you have more freedom in terms of poly count and in terms of rendering and what else? You have more texture sets, you have 10 UDIMs. So 10 UV tiles, not tiles, UV spaces. So, as a rule of thumb, yes, they're usually more detailed. Fill a character with experience, talk, taking, and some level of realism motivates an image that's strong. With experience, taking, and some level of realism motivates an image that's strong. Uh, I'm not quite getting what you mean. Picture with experience taking. Um, okay, and can I remake character from a movie? I'm making Happy Donkey right now. No, you cannot use an existing IP um, to participate in the challenge. It's just not allowed. You cannot make like Mario character in the Japanese version of it or something like that. Um, no, you cannot do that. And also, the character that you are making for the challenge has to be made from scratch, meaning that you cannot just re like reuse the project that you started months ago and then just fit it into the theme. It doesn't really work that way. That's why there are blogs that you have to um, upload to every week or so. Wait, Robin? Who's that? Who's that? Yeah, um, not sure, not sure. I tried to contact them about like 
possibly giving me some reference images that they used for the character because I couldn't figure out maybe you guys can help me out what are these things? what would you call them? I have no idea how to google them I tried like LED strips but it wasn't giving me anything close to it so if any of you are I don't know familiar with what these are, please drop it in the chat, I'll google it. Anyway. What should we work on? I reckon I'll add these things. Fastest way to do it is with this one, which is a mesh balloon but, um, brush that activates when you hold down control. Let's sketch out this thing. Did a pretty good job. Mm, some kind of futuristic tender <laughs> ribbons like alien wire yeah but they're like glowing and it, it seemed like i've seen them somewhere like in real life i think i was taking one of my joy-con Joy controllers once for nintendo switch and it had some sort of similar connectors to these but i'm not sure what they're called They're just fully made up by the concept artist, and I'm just tripping. I've never seen them before. Let's bend them a little bit with the arc. Yep. I hope you guys don't mind that I jump between different projects and I do promise to finish the rose sculpt and I most definitely will just because I really wanted to try out and render her inside of ZBrush with Redshift That concept's got really cool droplets of water sitting on the paddles, and I know where shift can rend the water nicely. So I'm curious if I can do it. Let's go to geometry, maybe do a clay polish. Yep, that doesn't hurt. Let's split them from the here. No. So I want to bend it inwards as well, a little bit like this, maybe a bit less. Im image search, computer, ribbon connectors, etc. Yeah, I'll try that. 
actually. I'll just take a screenshot of the chat and then I'll Google it all after the stream. So you're going to Tokyo? Awesome, have a nice rest. Thank you. Yeah, a long-awaited one. I haven't been outside of the country for the past six years. So I'm really excited. New Zealand is pretty much just an island in the middle of the ocean. So the feeling of isolation is real. If you live in states or in Europe, you're still somewhat more connected to the world in some way. And in New Zealand, it's just fewer isolation. Which I'm not used to because I grew up in Europe area. Traveling. Maybe we should zero mesh these to get a very clean result. Let's do 3k. Yep. Okay. Actually, zero mesher now has a retry button, so you don't have to go back, so I should use it probably. Let's lower it. That looks good. It looks like based on a jellyfish, so those are like tentacles from a jellyfish, but they look like some kind of leads or strips of flat cable. Yeah, that's what I mean. I get that it's sort of like tentacle thing, but I need like a visual reference for what those are actually. Um, so yeah. Some sort of lead strips, lead key. Redshift can render water. Yeah. I mean, there's glass now. Water. Over here. Yeah. Here you go. Um, I don't know what happens if I do this now. Probably nothing great because you need to set it up properly. So I'm not gonna do it this stream. Yeah. It can render water. Sure, you will get inspired by this country and make this model even better. That's the plan. That's the plan. Hello. Hello, Adam. How can I make the arm shorter or rotation every time my topology games mess up? Or rotation. Okay, so imagine you want to make do something like this. Well, it's good to have good topology. I started with a base mesh, so it has a good topology. One way to shorten it is to use a mask. So by holding control and like dragging on the mesh with the transpose tool selected, you'll be able to mask out different parts. So if you're in a brush, hit W, it will bring up the transpose tool, then hit control and hold it down and then drag. You'll mask it. Then you can scale it. it as well. If the topology is messed up, um, yeah, try running some zero mesher on it with this one. Z remesher guides, they usually guide the direction of the topology quite well. Back to this. Uh, 
add a few subdivs. Something like this, but it's quite loose, so I'll have to decide on what the concept artist meant, or might have meant. If I wanted to get like crisper edges on this one, I'd have to draw a mask separating the two areas. Maybe I can try that. It's a cool fill-in tool for the mask as well. Mask region, auto region. Just tap it and it fills out the mask. Thank you ZBrush Devs for that. I really wanted this feature. Yeah, thanks Layla. You're welcome. Scroll Reaper. Oh, sick progress. I need to try that out. I didn't realize you can mask through transpose tool like that. Yeah, that's a like life um a game changer. <clears throat> I really need to take a couple of hours and just watch a bunch of transpose tutorials. Yeah, it's a really versatile tool that I Highly encouraged to um, find out more about. Experience taking is the unconscious process of placing yourself in a character's place. Right. Yeah, I didn't know. And this happens in movies, but it can happen in art. So if you can sense the story behind it or um, underpinning of realism, it helps especially, especially with sci fi. Got it. Um, so what you're talking about is kind of like, kind of like the behind the, mm -hmm. kind of like a backstory of the character, right? If I'm getting it right. Um, I did do some research, if you can call it that. I know that Japanese names carry a lot of meaning in them, so. A bit different from Western names or Slavic names or any other names. <clears throat> the names in Japanese, as far as I understand, are comprised of words. And you can basically explain to a person your name in different, like, uh, kanji characters. So, like, sun and water, or like, I don't know, wind and moon and stuff like that so each name usually carries a meaning so i took ayako which is her name the robot geisha and i googled it because the concept art uh concept artist probably meant something by it and i was right and the name Ayako means color and design. It's a girl's name of Japanese origin. This vibrant name means color and design. Um, meaning color and design likely refers to the designs you can find on traditional kimonos, which are traditional Japanese uh, costumes. These designs are Ave inspiring and the name harkens to baby's heritage and homeland. So that was really cool to find out.
Is this the new ZBrush? Yes, ZBrush 2023. Oh, Miss Layla, hello. Hello, A363. What a big surprise for me. How come? Yeah, you're so lucky, Miss. Uh, how come am I lucky? Uh, it's fully make cut brush free. I'm not sure um, because it's from Fulligan and I like that guy, so I might have bought it for two or three bucks. But it's basically the same brush as just if you google ZBrush Mech Cut, you'll find it. It's a free resource, you don't have to pay for it. I used to have both this one and the other one, but they basically do the same thing, so I just kept one. This should do. Now, if you hit hit Control W, it will create a polygroup. Now, what we can do? Go to zero measure. Let's duplicate this thing just in case. I deleted the subdivisions, and now zero mesh should keep groups and bring the smooth groups modifier to zero. Let's do 2k. Well, do you think show your topology job uh, to us? If I could, ooh, yikes. If I could show it. Let's bring up the smooth groups. Um, I don't usually do it in ZBrush. Okay, this is much better. However, there's still some icky areas over here. Um, let's move it even further. Maybe increase it just a little bit. I can't retopologize in ZBrush personally. You can with Z spheres, I know, but I don't choose to do it in here. Man, this area needs a bit of relaxing, so what you can do is go over with it with a shift, like literally just relax it a bit, and then hit zero measure again. And as you can see, you just relaxed it. Awesome. Now it's a much better base to maintain this shape than it was before. We can just actually insert. Oof. Reads those crazy loops. Why don't we retry? Mm -hmm. Still does that. What we could do is go to edge loops, bring it down to one. It creates this polygroup in between the two groups. 
Now we can smite it. Ooh. Like so. Now we have a hard edge over here. Which is pretty neat. Now we can subdivide it twice. And let's save. Maybe the next stream. Do you do your retop in all in ZBrush or use manual? Another program. So there is a plugin called. Oh! Yeah, I used to have it in ZBrush 2022. I need to carry it over to 2023. It's called ZWrap. Like Z W R A P. It's a plugin you have to pay for. But you can transfer good topology, animation-ready topology, or anything you want. You have to have it to your um, bad topology or just sculpt topology. And it takes just a few minutes, sometimes maybe like 20 minutes of time instead of hours of your topology. So I use that a lot. I Probably won't use it on this project because yes, I'm starting out with the base model, but none of this topology will be used. Because as you can see, I have all of these panels I have to model. And for them to work properly, I'll need to manually go in and um, retopologize it. And I prefer to do it in Maya. You can do the same in Blender. If you want, you can do it in ZBrush. It's just um, with this particular part of the pipeline, I don't use ZBrush. I feel like the cyber lady should fly. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe she could. I have both Mecha and Foley's brushes as well. Haven't used them yet. How are Foley's brushes and is it better than regular Mecha? I haven't compared them, the two, in a long, long time. I just remember liking the Foley me uh, Mecha for some reason. I don't use all of his brushes, so I use Mecha a lot, Foley hair a lot. That's pretty much it. Just these two. I have some insert brushes, but I rarely use them. Yeah, and there's polish and trim, but they are very similar to normal polish and trim brushes, so... I should probably get rid of them. <laughs> Just to make more space in my brush palette. Not to say that they're bad, they're good. Okay, ma'am, thanks. You're welcome. Have you tried Shane Olsen Pinch or the G, um, GeoBrush? I'm not sure what GeoBrush is. I have Shane Olsen's cloth brush that I really, really like. That's the one that I use most of the time. Yeah. Because Umbrella, she is low-key a Robo Mary Poppins. She could be. 
designer, very good. Yeah, the design itself was really cool. Isn't that basically project? Project? What, what do you mean? Can you elaborate? I wish I could pop back and forth into Maya without any trouble. Well, why not? You rush to Maya while modeling and retopo. I'm just scared to do it because it breaks a lot. If you know what to do and what not to do, it doesn't break. Like, um... Yes, if you change topology in Maya and bring it back into ZBrush, um, sometimes it can break. If you are not sure what you're doing, if you like re-importing the mesh over the old mesh, and it will be like, oh, the topology has changed. Do you want me to reproject all the details? And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. It really depends on on the case. Okay. I also want to do I'm zero meshing here. Geo neck pill. I've never heard of it. You were saying earlier you were looking for references for your sculpt. Uh, yes, I was looking for this one. So, if any of you know what these tentacles were meant to be, like the LED strips, have you seen anything like this? Uh, what kind of visual reference that exists in the world? Obviously, these are sort of her tentacles, but do you know what these are? <laughs> Because I have no idea what to google to get similar images on the internet. And I need those images in order to model it properly. But in order to model it properly, I need to name it somehow. So it's sort of a loop. Ah, okay. One sec, I'll pull up a list of keywords. Yeah, that would be amazing, thank you. And the accusation says, hello Lele, you probably get asked this every time, but what music are you listening to? So this is just chill pop playlist. I play it only for you guys, because it's quite chill and I can talk over it and it's too overwhelming. Oh, it doesn't let me. But basically, it's pretzelrocks.com. And then you can just sign up and play this music for free. I'm on a free account. I don't pay for it. Um, and it gives you access to a couple of playlists every month. <coughs> yeah, and I play it to you guys. The reason I like to do <clears throat> to run some zero mesher on all of my subtools is because it's much easier to control and change the shape and the silhouette of each object when you have lower topology, um, lower subdivision count, whatever you want to call it. If you have very dense mesh, it's so, so hard to do some big changes in terms of silhouette or proportions and whatnot. When you have lower poly count, it's much more manageable. 
So to any beginning starting out artists out there that could give one advice instead of ZBrush. Don't go and subdivide your mesh hundred times. Maybe not a hundred, but like six, seven, eight times straight away. Work on the base mesh and maybe subdivide it once or twice. Don't go to 55 million polygons in the first 10 minutes. Just not worth it. Okay, let's paint this one yellow. This one of white. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm just still blocking out the shapes. I'm getting notifications from our station. Just probably close it. Oh, and I closed it with the music. <laughs> Mart. Alright guys, it's gonna be a different song. Thanks, what do you listen and watch to when you are not streaming? Usually, it will be either a podcast on YouTube or some anime. But recently I've been trying to just sit with my thoughts and not listen to anything. Because I would just distract myself with stuff for years. And it can be damaging to some extent to your mind, weirdly. Because part of your mind is trying to focus on the work, right? Then you outsource maybe like 5 to 10% of your brain power to listening to some show or podcast or even music in the background, which is, in, which is like a distraction from your thoughts that creep in. And sometimes it can just be unhealthy. Sometimes you do need to listen to your thoughts and your mind. But yeah. I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but I try to sit with my thoughts when I'm not with you guys. So, if we're going down this rabbit hole, I might as well. I am an anxious person, but a lot of the time, though so sitting down with my thoughts and analyzing them, seeing them come and go, because some of them are rational, some of them are irrational, it's a good exercise. And if any of you are like me, I recommend doing that. way is the best to create clothes in ZBrush? The best way? Um, sure. Take a mask. Maybe like a lasso mask. Let's make her a tank top. Mask it out. Then, actually, this was better. Once you're happy with your result, you can go and say duplicate. Also, you can hit Ctrl Shift D on your keyboard. Go select solo. Let's focus on that. Delete lower from your subdivision levels. 
and then hit Control w which will create a separate polygroup. Now Control shift click on it to isolate it, and then delete hidden, which I have on my menu. But you can find it Modify Topology, I believe. Delete hidden, yeah. Let's turn on double to see both faces, um, both sides of the faces. Now you have this. We can go to deformation and smooth out these jagged edges. As you can see. Now I'll go to geometry and zero mesh. Awesome. Now she has a tank top. You can give it actual thickness for a Z modeler. Or you can give it fake thickness through dynamic subdivision. Just activate it and now add thickness. There you go. Has a tank top. Now it's just a matter of sculpting folds and stuff. That's my preferred way of doing making clothing. Okay, back. What was I sculpting her hair, I think? Hi Lily Visku, hi Warrior Maddie. How's it going? So for this challenge, are you allowed to give your own twist of character designs you find in Art Station? It's a yes and it's a no. So you pick a concept from the lineup that you want, and then you can modify it to some extent, given that you're improving upon the concept, but I wouldn't um, stray away from it too much. Is that the phrase in English? Anyway, don't make it too different. But you are allowed to change some parts, improve upon it. Basically, you have some creative liberty in that. Silence is golden. True that. Here are some flat cable keywords. Ribbon cable PC flexible flat cable FFC. Flat twisted. Awesome. I'll screenshot it and I'll Google it after the stream. Thank you so much. When I'm in the strong enough flow mode, I forget to turn on music, so... <laughs> so you sit in silence? Just like I do? And some more cables that aren't necessarily flat, but they are colorful and could be helpful. Awesome. Have a screenshot. You guys are saving my ass right now. Thank you. Good afternoon. 4.30 p.m. here in Brazil. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. I love seeing you all from all different parts of the world. It's 7.30 a.m. here in New Zealand. When do you use Dynamesh and when's your mesh sub? Uh, so I use Dynamesh when I'm blocking out the shape that isn't like final yet. So if I were to do stuff like this and this, you know, and then I want to smooth out this area, I would use Dynamesh because it smooths it out, kind of like blends it all together. And once I'm happy with it, like let's say that's my final shape, then I do zero measure because it gives me more of a closer topology to my final one, and it's much much cleaner. Look at this. This is not clean. We've got triangles. There is no flow to it. Everything is just meh. But here there's a flow, and there are subdivision levels. So this is a cleaner way of working. 
but you only get there after using Dynamesh or Sculptures Pro. Some people use Sculptures Pro, I'm still not on that team. I haven't warmed up to it yet, even though it's been a few years now. Let's see. Here it's 12.55 a.m. in Mumbai, India. Wow, that's late. What are you doing? Go to sleep. Antler ears. Yeah. All the tiny details you do in a good subdivision. Very tiny, like pores and stuff. Yes, I would do it in good topology. I wouldn't do them on Dynamesh Mesh. Don't do it. You'll waste all of it. Mm. Yeah. No problem. And I all I did was to write to Chad GPT this can you make a list of keywords for similar things to cable ribbons? I need this in making sculpture of a rubber woman with cable tentacles. Awesome. Can you <laughs> can it actually understand? I've played around with uh, Chad GPT once. What? Can you feed it images? I think that is an ethical way of using it, in my opinion. True, yeah. I mean, you're not plagiarizing anyone, you're not harming anyone with it. I would say so too. Okay, this one is fine. I shouldn't touch it for now. Let's add in more stuff that she needs. She needs those, whatever those are. We can start with just a cylinder. Like so. They got a little bit distorted. When that happens. For now, I'm just blocking out the shapes and seeing how much I'll actually need to model. Um, wondering if I'm gonna do all of the hard surface in ZBrush. Probably will. It's kind of been my goal this year to learn uh, Z, um, Z modeler to the best of my ability. And to be fair, I've learned quite a lot. Nothing like that. It should be a bit smaller. Then they have those side bits as well. Where is the music? Can you hear it, guys? Okay. I haven't fed in I haven't fed it images, I think that is a feature they haven't released to the public. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, so those bits. For now, the way I'm gonna make them um, let's play around with what ZBrush comes with, which is Extrude Profile Brush. 
You can be used for so many things. Let's open the stroke menu to the side. ever want to smooth out as you can see it's a bit jagged um, you can hit six on your keyboard a couple of times and then hit the brush itself like your stroke itself will smooth it out a little bit now I don't want it to taper as much so I'll bring this thing up I'll bring this one down. Something like this. Now what we can do is just play around with the shapes. Not too much. This is interesting. Might keep it simple with this one. Three lines, that's pretty cool. Four squares, torus. Layla, you like to play video game? Oh no, this question. You guys know that I can talk about video games for hours, right? And I feel like I talk about it every time. Well, I'll gladly talk about it again. So, I do play video games. I'm currently playing through two of them. One being Tears of the Kingdom, the sequel to Breath of the Wild on Switch. The second one is Baldur's Gate. Surprise, surprise. Two very discussed uh, and hot games right now. Okay, I reckon either this one, because it's quite simple, or this one. What do you guys think? Here 14 or here 6? You like to play video games in general, yep. Yeah. It really helps me relax and I really enjoy like immersing myself in the stories that video game companies tell with their games. I think it's its own media of art. Six. Yeah, I like six too. I'm loving Tears of the Kingdom so far, it's a relaxing break from sculpting. Sure that? Until you meet the Lionel, it is. Six, yeah, I reckon. Let's keep this one. Yep. Move it out just a tiny bit. Cool. Or maybe a more squarish alpha. Yeah, I think I'll go with this triangular one for now. And then I'll see how I feel. I don't quite like how it rotated it. Now there is a way to rotate it backwards 
I don't remember how. Now let's rotate it manually with the transpose tool, just like I showed in the beginning of the stream. To align it a little bit better. Have any of you guys been to Japan? If you have, if you have any recommendations on what and where to visit, let me know. Delete the caps. Just hit this edge and go to bridge two holes arcs. And voila, we connected them. See if we can smooth it out. Oof. Or by normals. Okay. I haven't met a Lionel yet. I'm sure I'll see one soon. So far, my main bosses have been helping keep signs standing. Oh yeah, that one. I'm growing to love that NPC, but at first I would get so annoyed at the sight of him. But he's got a cool hairstyle. Like, it's a very Zelda hairstyle. Something really weird. And how come you haven't met a Lino? That would mean that you haven't played Breath of the Wild, which is a must play. One suggestion is to use local symmetry. What for? You can mirror and weld the two pieces. Oh yeah, I could, but there is no way of saying that you would do it the way that I wanted to. Okay. Yeah, potentially it could have been an easier solution have I known how to use it properly. Sometimes it gives the results that I need, and sometimes it just doesn't. So 
for now I'm happy with the result that I got. Let's keep moving forward. She says as she adjusts a hundred more things. We can crease this for now. Crease polygroups and now subdivide. Awesome. I want to go to Japan. I can't wait the day that symmetry is possible in different angles. I believe it is. As in like, if you pose your character. I think that's what they did with 2023. So this is not working. Yeah, this one is working. As long as you have dynamic on, no matter how you rotate it, it will keep the symmetry. As long as your gizmo is in the center of the piece and it's aligned, that's how it's gonna recognize the symmetry. This image you can make it in different angles because it's based on gizmo position. Wait, what do you mean it's facing in direction that isn't view, Roger? <laughs> Sunday Layla. Yay, that's me. Yeah, that's what Roger has been talking about in the chat. And rotate it now. Whatever you like. Okay, so we've got these pieces on. I probably want to the tentacle bits yet. They'll be the last parts that I'll make. The sculpt. Still haven't decided how I'm gonna go about them. Let's try and create this thing. I mean, I'll need to sculpt it first, and then I'll retopologize it somehow. Right, that's the plan. I reckon what the artist meant by it was that these parts go inwards, and so all of the light blue parts are kind of like in a shell sitting on top of the body underneath. Kind of like a mechanical body underneath. I'll show you what I mean. I don't know. I guess it's a safe reference to show. Something like this. But instead of the skin, she's got that dark blue part. And it's another skill that you need to develop. It's interpreting whatever the 2D artist has drawn. Important. Because they're artists of their own, if you and if you ever get to work in a company with a 2D artist, they have their own job to do and the ability to interpret whatever they've drawn goes a long way because you don't distract them from their work and uh, which makes you a good artist a valuable artist too
Bye. I was sure I saved it. The mask region thing. Maybe I didn't save it on my shelf yet. Weird. Really cool design. I'm really enjoying working with it. is doing that thing again that it's no longer scrolling. It really is super easy to make something symmetrical even though in a different angle. Ooh, okay. By the way, excellent concept you've chose for the contest, Layla. Good luck. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Neat. It's really therapeutical to see you drawing the mask. It's even therapeutical for me as well. And with this new thing, auto region, oh my god, such a small thing, but I didn't know how much I needed it until I got it. Okay. When this is done, the way I would push it in, can I do it here? Can I just play? Minus contrast? No. Let's deflate it. It should sort of be like this, but also it should be like hidden. You know? And then there'll be another shell underneath. I'm not sure how to do it yet. That's why it's called an art station challenge. Challenge your thinking abilities. Also, the thing is, the artist that drew it might have meant a completely different thing by drawing those lines. Maybe they're actually sitting on top. I don't know. That's just the way that I interpret it. Create a group for it. Low poly, how many? Five something. So let's add one more. We isolate it, and you can hit Control Shift X to grow the mask or to grow the selection. Uh, let's try polish by groups. Yeah, that's nice. Now all of this will need to be manually retopologized. <laughs> Looking forward to that. I am not. Although I know there are artists that enjoy retopology. I know for once some don't enjoy UV unwrapping, but I do. find it quite relaxing. How did I do that? Well, 
maybe for now we could fill it in with a different color so it's even easier to see the difference I like your work, it's really awesome. Thank you. I do enjoy your topology. Well, here you go. I have heard that some people call it sort of like a complex puzzle that you need to solve. You start your topology like on the face and then you do some on the arms and then you have to connect them somehow some people enjoy figuring out how to do it I can't relate but if you guys do enjoy it I mean even better for you because AI hasn't figured out how to do it yet. Also, I feel like my symmetry is off, weirdly. Isolate this part and do some clay polish on it. Awesome. Let's keep going. How much time do I have left? I have half an hour left. Layla, if you could have any Pokemon you want in real life, but you can only pick one, which Pokemon would you choose? Ooh. <laughs> That's a really tough one. From which generation? Not to say that I know each generation by heart, but... It's a tough one. Let me brew on that. And I'll let you know. Oh my, no, I have to work. Uh, I'll allocate 5% of my brain to thinking about it. And then I'll give you the answer. Uh, so now I'll sculpt. That was the hardest part for me to learn. I was going crazy. Which one? But what? There is AI though, right? It will solve all the 3D problems in the world. Uh, no? 
it will not. So far, it's only been creating more problems than we need to solve. I... Yeah. I was just joking that... <laughs> it's advancing so much in terms of, like, generation of images. But we still don't have a tool that will automate the topology, uh, the retopology process. Although it's getting better. I mean, the Z remesher is in the way an AI retopology tool. In a way. Is there a Pokemon that makes you immortal? I choose that one, if so. Any generation, whichever one you know. And Doki, Doki sounds good. <laughs> um, I mean, when I was younger, and there were some runs of like the first OG Pokemon show, I remember feeling really bad for Magikarp because it was useless. I was like, why would you create a Pokemon that is useless in the first generation? So I remember feel having like very strong feelings towards it, like the world the world hasn't done it justice. And I liked Coffin, was it? Coff? Wait, what's the Pokemon name? Am I mispronouncing it? Coughing. No. Is it? Yeah, this guy. Probably not the best choice, but... Can there be a good choice in Pokemon? There are so many. I'm being sarcastic. I've never had AI ever cross my desk at work at all to help me do any creatures. I just hate the posts on LinkedIn about it. Hate is a strong word. <laughs> I mean, what will you do when it... Potentially? will enter the field and people will have to use it. Um, as in like 3D artists will have to use it and learn how to use it. Maybe it will be implemented into a 3D pipeline. And not in a negative way of like feeding off someone else's um, hard work by like creating images in the same art style. No. I mean like automating processes like UV unwrapping or topology. If the industry accepts it, you don't really have a say in it. You'll have to either adapt and learn it and become even... like I wouldn't say it will make you a better artist, but if the industry demands it, you'll have to learn it. You'll have to adapt. So will you? Or will you just say, no, it goes against my principles, so I will not do it? I mean, up to you. Spending too much time on it. Let's mask. Let's mask the next bit. Just this one. Uh, it's a bit closer towards the middle of her chest. Going this. Mm. And then towards the middle here. Boom. Boom. Mm. 
you guys can't see it here but I have a whole frame of the character on the other screen and goes something like this Oop. okay time to refine it can we hide a fully paint part like we hide polygrip? Yeah. If you hold down control, control shift, you can hide all the poly paint at once. You can just hide on one sub tool at once, at, uh, at one at a time, if you just click on it. Or control shift and click and we'll disable all the poly paint. What do you mean, like, if I poly paint, then can I hide this thing specifically? See, it kind of destroyed my group. But I can bring it back by um, doing a similar thing in poly groups. You can hit from poly paint, and it will analyze the difference between this blue and this blue. Sometimes you need to play around with the tolerance modif um, like modifier. Sometimes it will not recognize, so it will say like, oh, this blue and this blue are too close together on like the spectrum. So it will not do anything. Let me just show you what I mean. It's all one group. From polypaint. You see it's not doing anything. Poly paint. Awesome. I increased it to 0.5. And as you can see, now it's a group that you can isolate if you want. There are jagged edges there because I did it on quite a low subdivision level. So if you want to have higher subdivision poly group that you can isolate, then do it on higher subdivision levels. I didn't do it because it takes longer time and we have less than half an hour left. Okay, oh, wow. Oh, good news is Magikarp does turn into a giant sea dragon, the sorts of call Giardus. Yes, I've seen that one. I couldn't remember the name of it, but I was so excited when it did turn in the show. Hmm, coughing, just have to stay away from no smoking areas, it seems. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I just loved how dumb it looked. That's it. That was... Um, there was not much more consideration going into it. <laughs> just remember loving it as a kid. I think it's a tool great for reference, but I can't imagine it producing Thanos on Avengers like work and having to direct shots. But that's not what I mean. What I mean, having a place in the pipeline is just automating the processes that are already very time consuming. Not replacing artists, giving them a tool that will speed up the process. That's how I see it. I mean, like Topogun. Yeah, but it's not quite automated yet. Like, it's a good tool that you can still, you still need to use it and know how to use it. And like, connect the polygons, right? I meant like, maybe there would be something text-based. Maybe you could like, define some areas of the model and say like, here, don't use any stars. Or here, direct the loops towards the hands and stuff like that. So you'll still need to know how to make good topology, but then maybe you would use an AI tool to do it for you. Oh, we don't have it. I 
and yes, I'd adapt to it, of course, I should say dislike, and a lot of the AI stuff has affected the industry already, the actor strike being one. Yeah. Get of that one. It is devastating. It's affecting the whole world right now, actually. Привет, привет. Yes, like hide that part. Yeah, you just create a polygroup with from polypaint and then you hide the part. By just control shift clicking on it. Have you seen new Miyazaki's movie trailer? It looks so amazing, I haven't seen it, but it feels so nostalgic already. I know. I'm subscribed to like Studio Ghibli channel on Telegram. And as soon as as it posted, I was like, what? A new movie, and Miyazaki directed it. That guy retired already like five times from the Studio Ghibli. And each time he comes back. And uh, um, I myself am really interested in the whole Studio Ghibli history and I read some books about it, how it was established Ooh. all the drama that went into releasing each movie the crazy amount of overtime that artists um, were never paid for all of those stories and yet each time a new movie comes out I'm so happy Definitely gonna see it. And because I'm traveling to Japan, I am expecting to see quite a few like merchandise pieces, probably, with that movie there. Or at least like just um advertisements. Okay. not right so when this happens what you can do is analyze region and then draw a line somewhere where you want to fill it in uh, it still doesn't work okay, analyze region auto region oh yeah now it works i hit the wrong one so here let's draw it and fill region awesome so it's just a way to let ZBrush know what you need from it. How do you go about creating a character whose face features are not very defined in the concept? Great question. I go on my art station and I go into my collections, which is a library of stuff that I've liked over the years and let me tell you I have a very very big collection and then I just pull from it stuff that normally fits the project that I'm working on like I just went on art station now um, here and I saw this one and it sort of fits so I'm gonna save it. Yeah, and over time you have like a library of stuff that you can use as reference. And obviously I, I know it's the Comte's name is Neo Tokyo. So she is most probably Japanese. So I look for 
reference images that have Japanese women. Their anatomy, the facial anatomy is different. How can I restore Zebra Z plugin settings? Z plugin. Which settings? There's so many. I'm quite sure. If you close ZBrush and open it up, it will restore them for sure. Sometimes. Um Maybe restore standard UI, if you're using standard UI, it might fix it, it might not. Not quite sure, sorry. Try it though. Station, so it doesn't beep. Thank you guys for liking my artworks, but I know it can be quite annoying to listen to the beeps. Okay. I felt the pain of AI when Midjourney shifted the 2D industry and directly affected me. That is one reason why I began to use ChatGPT to improve my workflow and give me an advantage. That's a better way to look at it, I reckon. I'm sorry it affected you, but yeah, it did. So, um, it did affect a lot of artists all over the world, from what I know. But also, I haven't heard of, like, massive playoffs due to Midjourney, just because of how limited it is and its capabilities. Sure, it can draw concepts, but they're all so generic. Oh my god. You can use them for pitch ideas and stuff. But... To use it as like a final final product you can use it to pitch ideas to artists that already are in a company and they can improve upon it so sort of like an idea that the creative director gives to the team and the team understands it and like processes it in their own way for their own like creative lens and then they create like the actual character or artwork or whatnot. But yeah, well, it's my personal experience in our company. No one has been laid off due to it, thankfully. Okay. You like you will never retire from art. I mean, with the amount of cigarettes that he smoked in this life at some point he will have to although this man is almost indestructible hey hey fidancha fidanchna hey. you have your collection in art station or pinterest both have a great collection of art in art station and same goes for pinterest i use them both and then i open up a pure ref board, which is a free software. And I create stuff like this. I'm gonna show it in the big uh, scale because there are some anatomical references there. But basically just drag and drop anything that you want on it. Interesting model and really nice. Reads really nice. Thank you. I think she means an inter internal library. Yeah, my own library. But you guys should all have your own libraries because you like stuff on ArtStation, right? Then you can go into your profile and then there are like, it's called collections. You can see everything you've liked in your whole life, or just in the whole time of using ArtStation. Okay, so it's sort of, sort of, 
what it looks like. I do feel like this bit is more on the, what do you call it? Trapezium? No, trapezium. Here. Here. Trapezium. This part. Nope. Auto range. Nope. On this one. Analyze this. No. Awesome. I am being very meticulous with my masking right now, and I know it's not really fun to watch, but I do need to be this way because it will drive my retopology later. So the cleaner I get this one looking, the better. This one's more pointed downwards. Yes. Uh, hi, how long you do 3D stuff? How much time you spend in ZBrush until you start to see that you're good in it? Mm, Maxime is asking. Um, by the way, Maxime, if you want to ask stuff in Russian, you're welcome to do so. I speak perfectly good Russian, so I can answer it. Um, I've been doing 3D for... Since 2014, it's easier to say that. Professionally, I've been doing it for the past five years, but even before that, I had some experience of internship in a company, which I also count as like professional experience. So maybe a bit more than five years, plus a year of university and stuff on the side. How much time do I spend in ZBrush until I see that I'm good at it? I mean, I'm still not good at it. Like, I improve upon it every day. But I... It's not a really good answer, so... I'd say... Some people can take half a year and get from very beginner to intermediate by doing, like, speed sculpts and anatomy studies and um, just finishing maybe one or two long-term projects of like sculpting a character or a gun or a vehicle, a prop, anything you want really in ZBrush. And you do get good at it. And I would say in this particular case, quantity beats quality. So it's better to do a bit more than to do less, but do it for longer periods of time. So let's say, um, do more speed sculpts and do a couple of serious long projects, but don't be like me and like involve yourself in like five different long-term projects that you can't finish, because it can really beat you down morally. That's what I would say. Don't be like me, guys. Uh, oh, okay. Hi, Layla. I don't think I ever caught one of your streams, but this is looking awesome. Oh, hey! It's, um... Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, was it... Ashley? Yeah. Yes, I believe it's Ashley. Sorry, I just needed to check. Not really good with names or nicknames. But hey, really, really glad to see you. Uh, thanks, Layla. And it's okay, I went through my doom and gloom phase already. I feel positive about the future now. I just hold my skills daily and keep a positive outlook. That's great. That's the only way really to get through it at the moment. Um, 
I'm glad you have a positive outlook. I don't know if anyone has that impression, but I find AA art so incredibly boring, generic, and basically useless. That's me as well. I've seen some case studies where it's been used creatively, but I'd say 80% of it that I see online nowadays. It's so incredibly generic, just like you said. And it's so easy to tell that it's AI as well. Maybe for the first 10 times you see it online, you're like, oh wow. And then your brain starts recognizing the same pattern, the way it draws hands, the way it draws faces, the way it draws like, um, just composition wise, the way it structures it. It's all very much the same. Even my partner, who's not an artist, like not a 3D artist, but he's seen some artworks here and there because, I mean, I live with it. He started noticing stuff on Instagram and like Pinterest and whatnot. And he can tell now a um, mid journey generated artwork from a legit 3D artwork. He says it's really easy to tell one apart from the other. Your last artwork, Medieval Back and Forth, looks really great. Can you tell me how you did the stitching? You did that on paint or zebrish or designer. Uh, great question. Where did I do it? Let's see. asking about the stitching in this one. Uh, let's pull up a close-up. Yeah. So you mean this one and this one? All of it was done in the Substance Painter. No designer. This was done in ZBrush, so it was a geometry. This was a geometry. This is Painter stitching. Stitching, stitching. Painter stitching. So it was a combination of the two. This was painter. This was painter. Painter. I'm so ashamed because I didn't fix the UVs and they're a bit stretched here. I just ran out of time because it was a timed con uh, contest. But yeah. Stuff was made in substance. Great advice. Uh, one big project to three smaller ones to keep you learning and growing at the fair pace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of like that. How do you make your characters' faces look good in the renders? Mine look kind of flat even though they look good in ZBrush. Yeah, it's the question of lighting. Um, do you, are you familiar with the term free point um, lighting? Free point based was it called? Yes. It's the lighting system used in film, media, TV shows, 3D, 2D. Free point based lighting system. It's the way I light all of my characters. It's incredibly boring, but it works. Idea is your subject is in the middle. You have a backdrop. Usually it's smoothed out. So it's sort of just like a plane. Like this and like this. And then you have a smoothing on it. So it's not like a harsh transition. So the camera is in the front or from the side, depending on how you want to frame it. Then there's a key light which is usually the strongest, and you can see it here, being like brightest. It's off to the side, sometimes I pull it up even a bit higher, so it's lighting it from kind of like the top of the forehead. Then there's a fill light, which is usually a much dimmer light to the side, on the opposite side. It fills in like the harsh shadow that that key light creates, 
so it's not completely in shadow but it's much 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 um, weaker in terms of intensity and then there's a backlight which is usually just creating a really cool rim outline if I were to shine the light behind me right now mm, can't really see it but it will basically create a really cool rim effect it's usually strong but it shouldn't affect the front of your character just the back and that's how I lit my um, character here you can also throw in some uh, HDRI lighting for cool reflections and stuff if you want Some devs are quitting AI tools because it makes their games look plain and boring. I mean, good on them. Did you show how you did the lighting of this render on stream? No, because I didn't do it in ZBrush, so I couldn't show it here. Um, a lot of people have been asking me for like a lighting tutorial, which is on my list to do. I just need to pick a software where I can do it and most of you guys can do it. I know a lot of you use Blender because it's free. I'm just like debating whether I should learn Blender to create this tutorial or not. Because it's sort of universal. The way I light characters in Maya would be the same way I would light it in any other software. Also, I'm noticing now that she's got much more point here, piece here. Well, that's better. A key fill room. Yep. The three pillars of lighting. I agree, all images are generic and boring, though, though I think GPT is useful for helping brainstorm ideas, keywords for reference, learning coding, teaching languages, etc. is very helpful for workflow. Yeah. Just like I said, it can be a cool tool for exploration of ideas, but I wouldn't say it's the tool to be used for like final product. Куда ты родом? С Молдовы. Странный. I love Blender. Of course you do. A lot of people do. And I love the idea behind it, that it's accessible and anyone can use it. And I think more 3D companies should do the same. Not maybe go fully free, but give an ability to like upcoming young artists to get into the industry easier. I don't know, ZBrush does it with their free versions. Um, I know some people like even introduce their kids to 3D by the means of like using um, iPad versions of like sculpting software, which is really cool. I grew up without that, but I'm sure I would get sucked into it so fast if anyone was to show me uh, sculpting from a very young age. Okay, now I'm noticing again some proportion changes that I need to make. Also, um, the stream is sort of over. I went a bit overboard with reading chat. Okay, let me finish this one real quick and then I'll read the chat and I'll have to get going. I have a job to get to. A job? I guess. Okay, this is fine for now. I'll need to finish the back at some point as well as this line sort of goes I'll show you this it goes down 
No, all the way to her wrist, probably. Hmm. So I'll probably do it off stream, just finish this line. And then I will be traveling to Japan, just like I mentioned, for two weeks time, so I will not see you next week, unfortunately. I will see you in two weeks time. On Monday, my time, probably Sunday, your time. Okay. Do you like to use Maya or Keyshot for your final rendering? I use Maya, but I don't use Keyshot. If you add stuff, it's not free. If you add stuff. Which, what stuff? But still a great software. Yeah, there's also a ton of free tutorials and stuff for Blender too, which is I learned from. Oh, I mean, I learned ZBrush off YouTube and like ZBrush streams like these over the past couple of years and it was all free. I didn't pay a single thing for like tutorials for ZBrush. What character is this? So her name is Ayako and if you rewind the stream to the beginning I talk about how I am participating in the contest run by ArtStation and that's the concept that I've chosen from there. He's sort of this cyborg geisha robot who's also a spy. Um, yeah. Something like that, okay. Do you know Keyshot? I used it for quick renders. I don't know Keyshot. No, no, I've never used it. Memories of Sculptress. Yeah, I recently found out it was no longer a thing. Okay, on this note, thank you guys so much for coming. It was really fun to answer all of your questions, to chat with you. Um, yeah, just to do my thing, as always. Thank you so much for coming. You can follow me on ArtStation. This is me. This is my name. You can literally copy it from YouTube or wherever you're watching uh, Twitch. Name of the stream. Paste it into ArtStation. You'll find me. Here there's my um, Instagram as well. YouTube. What else? Everything else. Follow me here. I've also recently created the Telegram channel and I haven't still come up with a way to share it properly. Uh, let's see if I can do it now. Пока, пока. Благодарю, удачи, спасибо. Uh, thanks for the stream. Thank you, thank you. Have fun there. Yeah, guys, I'll miss you, but I'll see you in two weeks' time. And I'll hopefully get enough inspiration for this contest uh, from Japan. Even though the topic is Neo Tokyo, uh, I just shared in the chat my link to the Telegram. If you're on there, I post like whips and updates there. Um, thank you for streaming. You guys are so sweet. Bye, thank you for answering all of my questions. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. It's my first time watching you stream, but it was really nice to listen to you in the background while working. Oh, thank you, Angelina. Uh, later. Bye bye, Layla. Have fun in Japan. I will. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day, night, wherever you are. Bye bye. <laughs>